name is Ian. We're part of the high altitude balloon here at Bergen, and uh, we'll be giving an overview of what we've done so far. So, for the, those that were not here, summer one, I'm going to give a quick rundown. We are launching a high altitude balloon to go up to 100,000 feet and catch meteor dust. Uh, so we've been this project has been going on for like three years. Uh, last year they wanted to take pictures of uh, the, the sun during the eclipse, but all their cameras failed, so there wasn't really a success. So this year we're trying to build on that and make it better, you know. Um, so at the beginning of summer one, uh, we were coming in. We had a rough design to get a petri dish open up in the atmosphere, um, but since then. We were also trying to look at why the cameras failed the previous year. And so far, um, yeah. yeah. So to begin summer two, um, this past Monday, uh, I was greeted with this issue. Um, we were doing a camera hot box testing to um, test the heat resistance of our cameras. Uh, we did not take the proper measures to um, notify campus safety what we were doing. And they considered it a public threat. Uh, luckily, they were notified before the bomb squad came to defuse the bomb, but um, the heat actually defused one of our cameras. Um, and since it wasn't going to work, we just decided to get rid of it. Um, this is a bunch of tests. I wasn't here for the previous testing, but apparently it fa failed then too. So uh, for weight concerns, we decided to remove the 360 camera. So. Uh, additional weight concerns, we were going to use aluminum plates to hold our petri dish assembly outside of the box, but that was going to be uh, a little bit too heavy. Uh, one sheet to hold a petri dish assembly would have been 1.125 pounds, and we'd already need to, that would already bring us to two pounds. We have a max of six pounds, so that already, that there goes like 33% of our, our whole thing. And so we switch it to polycarbonate, uh, which gives us for the two rods, two sheets, gives us only uh, about 1.1 pound which is already a lot uh, less heavy than the aluminum that we were going to use initially. We finished the, we finished the CAD models for the, for the payload's components and sent them to Professor Balzerat to have them reviewed and printed. We also, fini we also finished the circuit, we also simplified the circuit board and finished the net. So a little bit about what Lewis was talking about before the first presentation was our little drone test flight, which we um, conducted this morning. Um, yeah, so we attached our circuit board um, to the drone using fishnet, Velcro, scotch tape. Lewis was Sorry, nice enough to help <laughs> us with it. Um, yeah, um, then we um, had it fluctuate certain heights, altitudes. Um, so do you will talk about the readings that we um, yeah, were able to extract from this. And we took some pictures as well. You can see us standing right here, um, little ants. <laughs> and um, then we uh, got a little scale and we um, uh, weighed some of our um, equipment. And we're just seeing that it's adding up very quickly already. Um, what, two batteries is a pound, so. We've been having issues with weight, so. Yeah, I might add, the reason that we did this test flight is we want to open our petri dishes at about 60,000 feet. Uh, during this uh, flight, we put it at 250 to see if it, the commands actually give us open or close. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, the netting finished that. Um, this is what's going to keep our package tied to the balloon and hopefully not fall out. So, yeah. so, okay, um, beginning of the summer one, we had a problem with uh, a couple of things, the, the uh, GPS uh, breakout and the, the previous uh, Arduino board. Now we actually managed to put everything together and they're all working fine. Um, not perfect, but just Fine. Um, GPS module is working. We read data. However, it, there is a problem with encoding. And some satellites, it works fine. And some, it just doesn't. I don't know why. 
we need to figure out that. And we, I also uh, this morning uh, noticed that um, yesterday we were having the meter uh, in meters, like the data, everything, yeah. And now the altitude data, it, it was in meters. But right now it's feet, and I don't know. That's not okay. Um, also, we have a problem with the, uh, again, for the calculations for those, uh, uh, what's that called, the thermostores and the pressure sensor. And pressure sensor has to be uh, st uh, steady, it, but it's changing constantly. It can't change. Otherwise, we would be dead in here. And, <laughs> and yeah, that's all. Yeah. Normally, uh, our other Josh that's in our group is going to be here to talk about this, but essentially, at the beginning of summer one, that was our initial design. It was very clunky. It was probably way too heavy. Uh, since then, we've weighted down a lot more. We've lost a lot of extra weight that was not needed. We added holes for the screws to pin it down onto our polygarment sheet. Uh, since this picture was taken, we've also added the motor mount and a motor to get a rack and pinion going on here. The slide is open and closed. Um, uh, yeah, so a lot of progress has been made on this 3D model. Activity seems the well, precision activity peaks between August 12th through August 15th, at least according to RAL.com. Therefore, we will be launching the Halitude balloon somewhere within that time frame, depending on weather conditions. 